Good evening and welcome to the iBug Buzz conference call for uh, Monday, October 4th, 2021. I am Maria Christich and uh, I'm and along with Jim, I will be uh, we will both be your facilitators for this evening. Um, this call is being uh, recorded. So I would like you to be aware uh, of that. Um, this is an open forum for the uh, discussion of any uh, questions or issues with iOS devices, including iPhones, iPads, iPod Touches. We also discuss Apple Watches and Apple TVs on this call, and more specifically, uh, the use of the accessibility features, uh, more particularly the use of voiceover on these devices. So this is for anyone who's wishing to become more proficient in the use of the of the um, voiceover features of these devices. So welcome to everyone who's joined in tonight live and those who are listening back uh, to the conference via the report, recorded podcast playback. Okay, so yes, can you all hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, wonderful. We got oh. it working. All right. Well, I'll let you finish up. Sorry about that. Uh, no problem. No, thank you. Um, so okay. and so I'll finish this and then I will um, hand it over to you I suppose, when we go to uh, intros. So uh, great. So this meeting is being uh, recorded for the purpose of uh, posting it in various places, as I will mention. Um, we kindly have a few rules that we ask um, everyone to follow to keep the meeting running as smoothly as possible and of as high of a quality as possible because this uh, call is a podcast and it's also broadcast on um, a site into sound radio so in order to keep it as high quality as possible we ask that all of you stay on mute when you are not speaking um, we ask also that when you want to ask or answer a question that you unmute and then say your name and wait to be acknowledged by one of the facilitators again that's myself maria or jim this evening uh, so we don't use the raise hand feature of zoom on this call just to make that absolutely clear uh and just we ask that you kindly uh, not speak out or make any kind of exclamations while others are speaking um if you want to announce yourself just kindly wait for a bit of a break in the conversation um you know speaking when someone else is is very distracting and disruptive so um we also ask that once you've uh, asked your answer to question to um give other participants a chance to uh do the same so that everyone gets a chance to participate in the meeting so um just if you've uh if you've asked, give others a chance to ask before, uh, you know, asking your next or making your next comment. And very importantly, we, uh, all of them are very important, but as is this one, we ask that you minimize your background noise. So if we have to um, tell you twice that you have too much of it going on, then we may have to remove you from the call again to keep the quality as high as possible. So um, how to go ahead, uh, how to mute and unmute um, in the Zoom app on an iPhone, the mute button, is, and this is a toggle in all cases, the mute button is on, on the uh, bottom left corner of the screen on the mobile device. Um, on an iPad, however, the mute button toggle is at the top center. Uh, on a, a, P, a Windows PC, you're going to use Alt A to toggle. On a Mac, it's Command Shift A. Um, on the P on the Mac and the PC, you can use a space bar as a push to talk, meaning you hold it and say what you want to say, and you're temporarily unmuted. And then when you release the space bar, the muting, uh, you go back on mute. And finally, on a phone, if you are dialing in, you are going to use a uh, star six. Uh, so uh, with that, I am going to, if you'll just... We can actually unmute, and I do apologize, your help, Herbie, got kicked out, so... Um, oh, okay, thank you for yeah. letting me know, so I will, um, yes, I will uh, bring him back in. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jim for introductions. Good evening, everyone. This is Jim, your mystery host. Guess my name, and you'll win a prize. So what I'd like to do now is ask everyone to go, we'll go around the room and introduce ourselves. I'm Jim, your mystery host. As I say, guess my name, you win a prize. So I'm from Central PA using um, the iPhone XR. Uh, next, please. This is Chanel in Houston. 
Oh, okay. Chanel, good evening. This is Marion in Tennessee. Marion, how are you? Good, thanks. Good, good. And next, who do we this have? This is Ned Susan in Texas. From Houston. Whoops, wait a minute. Ned, and then who stepped on Ned? Susan from Houston. Susan, I thought I heard you stepping on Ned. Yes, good evening. Okay, good evening. Okay, we know how excited you are to be here. And who is next? We have Herbie in Houston with an iPhone 12 Pro, and I am hoping to get my iPhone 13 by the end of the month. Good for you, Herbie. All right, fantastic. This is Maria, your co-facilitator in Albany, New York. And I have an iPhone 12 Pro. Okay, fantastic. And we don't have anybody else new, do we? This is Eugene from Southern California. Ah, Eugene, good evening. How are you? Thank you for coming in. Is this your first time on here? It's second time, but I called a uh, long time ago. Okay, well, we'll count you as a new caller then. How's that? Perfect. All right. So if there's no one else, you may get to... This is this is Brad. Brad, how are you, pal? I'm good. Normally good. I'm in Dallas, but tonight I'm joining the call from Arlington, Virginia. I'm in Shree Roy's backyard. Oh, what are you doing in Shree's backyard? Does not he know about that? But yeah. Yes, he does. We're supposed to okay. get together for dinner. He's <laughs> okay. here in the room. He's just oh, being good, quiet. Good. Yeah, I'm attending okay. a conference, my wife and oh, I. Oh, so. fantastic. fantastic. Going to see some museums. So anyway, good, just good. want to say hi. And I'm joining on my MacBook Pro. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. And we'll say hello to Shri, even though he's being quiet. And anyone else? Suva from Houston. Suva, how are you tonight? Doing good. Good, good. Now, anyone else? This is Shri. Shri, and all I right. Pro, Max. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, this is Gail. Gail, good evening. Hi. This is Stephen from Austin. I don't think I came through earlier. I think I, I thought I was unmuted, but well, you're here I am definitely now. here now. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this this is Dee from Illinois. Dee. Um, Southern Illinois. Southern me. Illinois. All right. Good for you. Southern Illinois. Yeah. All right. Where in Southern Illinois? You, you can't live in the whole Southern part of Illinois. Sure you have to live somewhere. I, what I town? don't pinpoint myself. I'm sorry? You don't need to know. Oh, well, all right. All right. And, <laughs> and you're not a first time caller, are you? No. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyone else? This is Dan from San Diego. Dan, how are you? And who else we got? Karen in Philadelphia. Karen, a neighbor of mine. All right. How are you? Fine. Anyone else? Joni from New Hampshire. Joni, all right. Yeah. Okay. If there is no one else, we are going to open this up for questions. And you guys all get to try and... Lisa and Porter. Oh, Lisa. All right. Okay. All right. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How good. are you, Tim? Good, good, good. Good. Okay. And anyone else? Going once, going twice. Okay. We're going to have questions. All right. And uh, before we get to that, I am hearing some background noise. So everyone is muted again. Okay, so who would like to start us off? Susan. Susan, okay. Susan. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. The reason why I want to start first is with just a tiny bit. Um, uh, at first, I didn't catch. The, the lady's name, Maria or something, I think. Maria is the co-host, yes. Oh, okay. I, I was uh, yeah. working on on, on th this thing, and did she say she sent me a something or another to get on? Um, maybe I misunderstood. If she did, I didn't get it. And then the second thing is I tried the cellular 
on my iPad to see if it would work, get me on the Zoom, and it did not. So anyway, uh, that's all I want to say in those things and just hope and pray one of y'all could help. So and, Susan, uh, so this is, sorry, this is Maria. I just want to, for the hi, continuity, hi. hi, for the continuity of the call, um, just for the recording. So your question is that you're not able to get the iBug link to work uh, on your Zoom. Um, I had not sent you anything. I um, okay. what we what we had mentioned was that your uh, whether you had tried from the website which you had and whether you had updated yeah. your uh, Zoom which you had yeah. as well. And so the mm -hmm. question was essentially if anyone else had any idea and that you were able to successfully get other Zoom calls to work. And so the the yeah. question is, does anyone else have any ideas on what could be going on? This is Shri. Okay, Shri, go ahead. Sorry about um, that. Susan, did you try to copy that link and put it in your as a new contact and try the link from there? Yes, we've done everything. I've even had help um, from wait, wait, a couple wait, of people. Susan. Wait, oh, sorry. Susan, so so you copied the entire link and you pasted in the under the contacts you pasted it under the url to text field to text me under the url text box is that where you copied and pasted the https url link i'm not really following you uh, i guess the only way i can answer that is I've done nothing different as long as I've been using the iPad, getting on Zoom. Nothing has changed. No, no that's not what that's I'm saying. That's the only way I know how to answer. So, no, so what this I'm is. Saying, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Shri, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so I just want to clarify. So Susan, so Shri is asking if you in your contacts, right? Like on in your contacts app, if you have created a contact for Zoom. And oh, yes. when you create a contact, there's a field. And one of the fields is called URL. And oh, he's yes. asking if that's where you have pasted the Zoom yes. link. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> so when you go to the contact and you click on the URL, what message do you get? It just uh, brings me to this, well, I'll call it a page. And it says uh, that I can join or start a meeting or sign up, uh, sign in, uh, um, in progress, waiting, and then I keep saying waiting, waiting, you know, that's all. Did, did you sign in? I'm hundreds of times, and I've had other people try too, and it just won't work when it comes to iBug, so. Uh, one other um, thing then, Susan, I would suggest that you clear out your cache on your browser. Cache? Yeah. Yeah. Clear out your cache and cookies in your browser. So. Oh, I've done that. I've done that. That was suggested, and I've did all that, all that, and the history mm -hmm. too. This is Jim. <laughs> May I ask you a question, Susan? Are yes, you sir. able to do anything else on on your iPad? In other words, are you able to go out and bring up your browser and explore the web? Are you able to get your emails on your iPad? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so we know we know your Wi-Fi is working. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, good, good. So it sounds like um, what I would do is get that link again, or maybe go directly to the iBug Today homepage. This is what I have. I have. Okay. And it, doesn't, okay. it doesn't work for me. And in the email, okay. I would open it up and try the okay. link, and it it wouldn't work. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Herbie. Weird, isn't it? Have you tried entering the information in manually, like going into where it says join meeting and then typing, you know, the seven iBug today, whatever the numbers are, and then entering the password manually instead of clicking on the link? It doesn't take me that kind of a page. It's, I don't know how to describe it. It has, since I can't see it, I guess the like buttons, it's like, it so almost looks like a telephone sign into pad. Zoom when you open Wait. the Zoom okay, hang on. app. That's... Hang on, let's let's let. Let's hold on. Okay. One at a time, guys. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, when I tap on it, all right, it, Herbie, it goes, go ahead, Herbie. Work. 
Okay, okay. let's see what. Uh, yeah, because when you is. open Zoom, you should be if you're if you're not, you should be signed into your account, and then it should present some options like you know start new meeting, join a meeting. Button, you know, it should be a button there, and you double tap that, and entering the information, um, you know, manually. That's at least something to try. I don't know if it'll work or not, but you will have to enter the password, which I think yeah. is three six nine nine seven eight. So it's not. Shouldn't... Yeah. So try entering yeah, the information Terry. manually and see if that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Well, Terry and I tried that last Thursday, and. And even last Tuesday, uh, and it just, uh, it fell too. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a pain, but I'm just being honest. Well, you're that you're I not. Everything. No, we're, we do want to help you solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, I it's, think maybe what you ought to do is is try what Herbie said. Clear your cash out completely. Yeah, I did. You know, under, under, Safari, under settings in Safari. Yeah. This is Maria. Yeah. Um, oh, go um, ahead, Maria. Yeah, have you, Susan, have you tried uninstalling and reinstalling the Zoom app in case something yes. is Zoom? Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, this you. is Shree. <laughs> Go ahead, Shree. Um, I, I, here's what I'm going to suggest, Susan. I think you need a sighted person to look at that URL and make sure it's an HTML link. Um, it could be that it's coming out just as plain text, and that's why when you uh, click on it, it's not going correctly. Uh, but okay. the fact that you're saying that you've got the sign in, um, are you, if you're running the app, you should get like join a meeting. Do you get that? N no, um, I, it's not taking me anywhere I need to go to do anything. I don't know how to explain it to you. But, but like I said, even if I uh, go into iBug Today's website and find that link to click, click on for tonight class, it won't, it will take me to that same page I was trying to describe a moment ago, but no matter what I tap on, it doesn't work. It just says what it says. And even if I go into my email and find an iBug email and try that link to get on, it does not work. So it doesn't matter where I go to tap on the link. It just doesn't work for me. This is It does, you know. That's right. so. I think what you're experiencing is like going through a web page because the app doesn't behave like that. Uh, the web page, when you're accessing it that way, you do get the options that you mentioned. Uh, you know, I, I have a feeling that, and I'm just guessing here, you're trying to access Zoom through a web page, mm -hmm. not on the app. Yeah, that sounds like it to me. Maybe like well, the address is, is not complete. This is Maria. Why is it working uh, the same ahead, way um, uh, on everything? No matter what I click on. What are you using? Your, really not hang on, hang on, to, folks. Uh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay, sorry. one person at a time, please. And again, just sorry, wait. Sorry. And I'm doing this as well. So it's what I'm saying applies to me as well. Let's wait for a break before saying our name in the speaking. Um, Susan, sorry. I'm wondering, like you were mentioning on your iPad, does this work fine on your i like on your iPhone? Is it just literally this device? Same problem. Same problem. Oh, same problem. Wow. Only the shadow Jody? knows. Thing goes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Jody. How did you get in? How did you get into the call tonight? I from the telephone number. Okay. Okay, the one tap mobile. Also, when you're trying to access Zoom, are you doing it when there's actually a working session going on, like we are tonight? Or are you trying it uh, during off hours? I. Uh, when when there's something going on, for example, yesterday morning I got on for my Sunday school class on Zoom, no problem at all, works okay. just fine. And then I could get on another so, uh, meeting <laughs> group, no problem on Zoom. Okay, so it sounds like this is more of an issue with the actual address. If she's I able to bring up other Zoom, if she's able to bring up other zoom meetings you know like our sunday school <clears throat> then yeah. it sounds like there's there's an issue with this address i don't know that like i keep saying it doesn't matter where i go right to the link it all does the same thing and take me no. to this 
I won't even call it a web page. It's all right. I can describe but, it as kind of brown looking. Uh, okay, and okay, okay, buttons okay. Going okay. Around Susan, Susan, okay. Susan, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying we to got help that. Them. We got gotcha. you. Okay. So the fact that you're able to get on to other sites with Zoom yeah. leads me to believe, and I, everybody else can either agree or disagree, but it leads me to believe there's an issue with the address that you're using. And I think, you know, um, anybody have any comments or ideas about that? This is Suva. Yes, Suva. Is it possible for anyone to send a message uh, with our um, the iBug link straight into the uh, through the messaging app, just the link, and see if that will help with the redirecting and with the. This is your yeah. Okay, we're going to take yes. I'm sorry, just to jump in, we're going to take this one more comment from Herbie and then we're going and to shift on to the on, next yeah. question. All right, this is Herbie. Yeah, that is something that uh, can be done. Um it, you know, it is possible to send the uh, link to via message and she could try that and see if it works. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Sounds good. When you say so, message, is that a text message? A text message. Just so message. I'll yes. understand. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all going to okay. do that now or sometime? Well, or no. That's... We're working it in a little bit, Susan. Yeah. Yeah, we're not. Okay, okay just let me yeah. know. Okay, uh, thanks. All right, surely, it. surely. So let's um, go to the next question or questioner. This is D. D. yes. Yeah. From somewhere in okay. Illinois. Somewhere in <laughs> Illinois. Uh... Okay, go ahead. I broke down and bought me an iPhone 13 mini this week. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And I actually love it, but I do have a couple of questions. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll ask one now and come back later because you know, I'm okay. not supposed to. Okay. Um, you know, down at the bottom where you get that little bleep and you slide up to open it. Yes. <laughs> okay. I have played around with somebody else's phone before. And there was a haptic motion with that little bleep. And I went in to voice over and I think the sounds and haptics and the right. voiceover. But I can't find, I've tried a couple of things and it didn't seem to be it. Just can somebody tell me what setting I need to get that little. And the other that... thing, sometimes when I stick my finger down in that area, I don't always get that little bleep. So sometimes okay. I have to mess around down there a little bit before I get the little bleep. And but I'm okay. thinking if I'm in a noisy place, I won't be able to hear that little beep thing. Okay, so you're having trouble with haptics on your phone, new phone. Um, anybody have any ideas or suggestions for D? This is Jody. Jody, all right. Yeah. You you go to rather than going to the voiceover haptics, go to settings and go down to sounds and haptics and turn it on there. I try that. Okay. Is there a certain place, a certain setting under there, or is that just turn on general all over? I I haven't checked in a while, but I know it's it's under settings. So rather than going to accessibility, just go go just go to settings, sounds and haptics. Okay. Maybe somebody else can find that. This is Shrey. Well, I think it's on because it seems like I get haptics under other things. I'm, I'll double check it. Okay. Shrey, go ahead. Yeah. So for, for your first question, you're going to go to settings, accessibility voiceover, swipe right to audio, double tap on audio. Right. That's going to take you to sound and that? haptics, double tap on that. And then first option is going to be your sound. And the second option is your haptic. And when you go to the haptics, you're gonna have a, a slider bar below that, that's your intensity of your haptics. And if you're, if you're starting off, I would recommend that you put the sounds and the haptics at 100% so you can really hear and feel it. Um, to answer your second question, the way I learned it is, I, depending on how you're using it, but I place my thumb where the lightning port is and then I perform mm -hmm. my slide up so that I would always hear the first bump to indicate that I've started performing the gesture correctly. 
And then I don't stop. I just continue to slide straight up till I hear the second bump, which is your home screen. And if you continue to swipe straight up, then it's your app switcher. But I would suggest you start where that lightning port is. Don't touch the screen yet. Start from the lightning port and then touch the screen as you slide up to hear the first bump and then continue. Okay. But under that sounds and haptics, it seemed to me like there was a whole list of settings there. Is there one just for that to open the phone? This is Shree. Go oh, Shree. Okay, I, I guess I'm a little confused there. Are you talking about, you wanna hear the haptic and the sounds be louder, correct? Well, I wanna feel the haptic, I guess is what correct. I want, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when I you don't double feel tap there now, when you double tap on sounds and haptics, it's going to open mm -hmm. up and you're going to have two sections on the top. The first one is going to be for your sounds. When you swipe right, you're going to hear sounds and you could say sounds turned on. And then when it's on, you're going to have a bar, a slider bar below that. It's going to ask you, I believe it's going to ask you, do you want to match the audio sound or do you not? I turned mine off. When you turn it off, you get the slider bar. If it's on, it's going to just be the same volume as the your speaker volume. So I turn it off, and then you should get a slider bar, and then you can just flick up or down. And I would encourage you to go to 100%. Once that is done, you go ahead and flick right. The next option is going to be the haptics. When you hear the haptics, you swipe right again. Then you're going to get the slider bar for the haptics, and you're going to go ahead and flick up till you get to 100%. They're right next okay. to each other. Okay. Now this is under the voiceover though, right? It's under voiceover audio. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where I had been, but I don't know why. I... Okay. I'll give it a try and see. Okay. What I can... uh, All right. Well, and thank you. We, oh, you're welcome. We'll come back to you, you know, once everybody else has had a chance to okay. ask questions and then we can come back to you. Okay. Next question, please. Okay, just as a note of passing information, uh, iOS 15.01 was released on Friday. Is everybody aware of that? That's some, mostly a, um, a fix for people wearing masks for recognition, but there's some other fixes in there too. I don't know how many of them are voiceover related or not, but uh, you know. If anyone has uh, any thoughts or suggestions? Or... This is Brad. Brad, go ahead, pal. It said in addition to fixing the uh, unlock with Apple Watch when you've got a mask on, it, it, it said bug fixes, and Apple's always very vague yeah. about what exactly that is. Right. Uh, I, I think it was only uh, the mask thing may have only been with a... Uh, iPhone, the new iPhone 13, because I've got yeah. 12 Pro and I never had a problem under iOS 15.0 unlocking with uh, my watch with a mask on. But I will say, since I've done the update, um, it still works just fine. So I, I think it was just for the 13s. Fantastic. Okay. Anyone else? Well, this is Gail. I have a question um, sure. on another topic when you. Okay. You may ask your question. Okay. Um, on the Apple, on the Apple TV, um, I put audio description on the phone, and then I put audio description. I made sure audio description was in the settings, and then I updated my Apple TV uh, to the latest. And um, I'm still. Well, that's okay. That's not me. Um, but um, anyway. When I went to the, uh, you know, I was watching, I think it was HBO Max or Hulu, uh, my audio description is still not on for some reason. And I, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong because it's in settings on my phone. And I, I yeah. Okay, does anyone have an answer for Gail?
I, I do have, a, I will ask you a question then, if I may. Uh, now, are you just watching Apple TV or do you have Netflix or? No, uh, no, I was, no. I, uh, this, this um, happens with Apple TV. It happens with Hulu. It happens with HBO Max. It doesn't happen with Netflix, but it does happen with the Hulu and HBO Max and also with Apple. Hmm. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I, you this may not free. be doing... Oh, go ahead, Shree. Uh, I can definitely tell you with HBO Max, you're going to have to go in when the movie plays and go to the audio settings to enable audio description. It won't work the other way. Uh, matter of fact, it happened to me over the weekend when I was watching HBO. And it's done it previously, too. So I'm going to guess that just because you have audio description enabled on your Apple TV... You're still going to have to go into the um, actual movie and um, enable audio description. Then it works. Okay. okay. Well, I was watching um, like a like Big Little Lies, and so I put audio description on the first one, and then it stopped. And I thought the audio description would keep playing, but I had to keep doing it every single time. And then I'm wondering if I'm doing it wrong. This is free. Okay. Is this when it's buffering when you're watching HBO Max? What do you mean by buffering? Buffering is when you're watching it, and you get a screen that just stops because it's it's the internet's catching up. Or the movie's trying to catch up to the internet. Uh, no, uh, it's not buffering. So it's continuously playing. Right. Yeah, it's on okay. the television. I thought you, right, right. No, I thought you yeah. said it stopped. Oh, no, when I'm talking about the audio description stops. Like, say, for example, at Big Little Lies, you know, it's, it's a series. So the first one, I have to put the audio description. And then after that episode, then the next one starts. But then uh, it'll start without the audio description is what I'm talking about. If, what platform is that on? Like, it's who's providing on that movie? The, no, this is a series on HBO Max, but I've also noticed yeah. it on Hulu. You're going to have to do that on HBO every time. Oh, I do. HBO yeah. Max. H HBO Max. I do. It, and and, and if also, if it buffers, you're going to have to do it again. I don't know why. It's just, it's not, it's not as user-friendly as some of the other ones with audio description. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, someone else had a comment or Kathy? question? Oh, go ahead, Kathy. Is there a chance that an episode is not audio described? Because I know with, isn't it Hulu that not everything is described and sometimes not every episode is described? Or is that changed? Well, well the ones I'm watching... The, this series is audio described. That's why I, okay. I knew it. Yeah, because the first one was described and then I knew that. And I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong. Shri, do you know what um, I'm supposed to be doing? Maybe I'm doing the, do, uh, what I'm supposed to be doing on the remote to, to get the audio description each time. Uh, this is Shri. Go ahead, Shri. I believe on HBO, you have to, while I'm the movie's the playing. I'm sorry. What, what was, what was all right, Folks, I'm just going to do a mute all because I think we okay. are getting some interruptions and background noise. So you sh should be able to come back in now and please kindly just unmute if you are speaking only. So I believe we had Shri was yeah. answering. Yeah. No. This is Shri. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't quite understand her question. Okay. Um, Gail, if you'd like to okay. unmute. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to, um, when is playing? Oh. Okay. Do I? Um, yeah, yeah, I got it. Um, okay. What finger? Yeah. What do I do on the remote? Okay. This Thanks. is Shri. Thank you. So what I had to do was, um, this is crazy, but you have to watch the movie, you have to play the movie. When the movie plays and you, um, you swipe down, I believe it's gonna pause the movie and then you're gonna get those menu options. 
and one of the menu options is the audio and you um, swipe right to the audio, select it, and then you're gonna get the option for audio description. Um, HBO, I don't know what's the deal with HBO. It's, they don't make it very user-friendly and I've complained and complained and it's still the same, but that's the way I've been turning audio description on for HBO Max. Okay, Gail, okay. Are there any, okay. do you have any other questions or concerns? Okay, well, thank you. I, I just thought maybe I was doing something wrong, but that's the way I've been doing it. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Not at all, not at all. Okay, who else has a question or comment? This is Jody with a else? question. Uh, okay, Jody, go ahead. I was talking to a friend this afternoon and she, we were talking about um, backup chargers, uh, you know, pocket backup chargers. And she was looking at one called Rush Charge, which is a wireless backup charger. And I, 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 I told her that I was gonna ask about it tonight because it would seem to me that being wireless that it would take longer than a, uh, than a plug-in type. And I wondered if anybody had tried a rush charge. Okay, does anyone have any uh, comments about that, Brad? Me. Oh, go okay. ahead, Irby. Um, you know, wireless charging, like you said, it is slower. It's a little bit faster if it's mag safe, but ultimately a standard wired charger is gonna be your best bet, especially for a fast charge. And also the other thing I would suggest if you want a fast charge, the um, newer iPhone chargers that I think are now, what, 20 watt or even an 18 watt one would definitely be faster than some of the um, even older ones. So um, for wired charging, but wireless is definitely slower. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I use wireless all the time. <laughs> okay, anyone else? This is Dan. Ben, go ahead. Okay, since uh, we're talking about uh, chargers, uh, maybe some of you guys know that have these newer iPhones on the uh, on the uh, MagSafe charger for the iPhone 13s. Do you also have to buy a power adapter, or does it come with a power adapter? Okay, this anyone have? Go ahead, Herbie. So I, Apple, from this point on, unless they decide to change things again, all they're sending you is the phone and the cord. But if you need a power brick, you have to purchase that separately. This is, no, this is Brad. I, go ahead, Brad. Or, no, I guess that's not me. Go ahead. This is Brad. Yeah, when you order them, the MagSafe chargers, it's just the charging puck and a wire and a USB connector. You, I, I believe it's USB-C. Uh, I had one once and I didn't keep it, I sent it back. But no, there's no charging brick adapter or anything in the box. You have to provide that separately. Okay. Also, uh, comment, Herbie mentioned one of the 20 watt chargers. Uh, I bought one of those <clears throat> uh, separately and I have used it to charge my iPhone 12 Pro. And let me tell you, that thing will take the iPhone 12 Pro from about 18 20% up to about 80% charge in like 20 minutes. That thing is fast. Oh. Yeah, and it doesn't do any damage to the phone, obviously. This is Brad. Oh, go ahead. No, the new phones are designed to use those chargers. They come with a lightning to USB-C uh, cable in the box and you have to that's the recommended charger for uh, the new phones I think the 11s came with an 18 watt and for some reason they upped it to a 20 but of course on the iPhone 12 pros they do not provide a charger in the box anymore but that's the one they prompt you to buy when you order the phone yeah this is Elisa. I, oh go ahead Elisa. Ibrahim and Ibrahim you're right after Elisa Alisa, so, go ahead, please. For the iPhone 13s and above, those come with a charger. You have to buy the brick cube to use it, or you can use it with like a like a regular charging stand, like a nice is, like a cable this stand. This is Brad. Go, Brad. 
none of the iPhones come with a charging brick anymore. Even if you buy an SE, any iPhone you buy new, no more charging brick. And you can use any of your old charging bricks. They just will charge slower. The old little square five watt charging bricks will still charge an iPhone. And if you're gonna charge it overnight, that's just fine, you're not in a hurry. But you can buy the 20 watt one. I sell it for $20. And uh, like I said, I bought one and I use it for different things. Primarily, I use it with my um, AirPod Max headphones, but I have used it on my iPhone when I want to charge quickly and it will charge it very fast. Okay, Brad, I just have one question and we'll, if that answers Elisa's question, we'll turn it over to Ibrahim. Now, if I take my 10R and put it on one of those new charging bricks, Will that uh, affect my phone in any way? Will it blow it up? I doubt it. I do not know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I do not know. I would, with an older phone like that, I would just recommend you continue to use either that wireless charger you use, which that also charges pretty slow. I think that's yeah. maybe a max, depending on which one you have, it's a maximum of seven and a half. But um, I know that the new ones, you know, are. Uh, Starting with the 11s, they, they shipped with an 18 watt and the 12 um, with a 20. So th those those two new ones are certainly designed to work with the more powerful chargers. Right, right. Okay. All right. This is, this is Maria. Yeah. I just want to... Yeah, I just want to clarify when Brad was saying the twelve, the the twelves, they don't ship with the twenty watt. It's, I think Brad, you were trying to say that when the twelve came out, they started offering the twenty watt one for sale. This is Brad. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. When you order a phone through the Apple website or through the Apple Store app, at the end of the ordering process, it prompts you with various other items you might want to consider buying, and the number one on that list is the twenty watt charger i just got my wife a 13 mini and that's the first thing it offered we want to get a 20 watt charger to go with your new phone so they're pushing them. good yep yeah. okay 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 this is d hold this on d. <laughs> uh, hold on we've got ibrahim and then d and then dan or we can do dan d whichever um uh, so Andy? ibrahim um so I'm just wondering, I just got a new iPhone SE uh, like a month, like a couple of weeks ago, and they gave me like a um, a cube or something that is different than the one that came with the old SE. Is that the 20 watt charger you're talking about? I would have to defer to Brad on that because this is Brad. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the new 20 watt chargers, they're not a square cube, they're kind of a rectangle but they have okay. a USB-C connector, not the old USB-A. Uh, I think okay. the 18 watts charger was similar. I've never had my hands on one of those, but I know that um, and, they're probably at USB-C also. Do, do either of those work with the SE or would they damage it? So is Brad. Oh, Brad. Um, you know, since the SE is pretty new, and the SE2 came out after the iPhone 11, and it uses yeah. the same processor as the iPhone 11. My yeah. guess is that it will, it's designed to, to work with it. However, to be safe, I would check with your local Apple store or call okay. Apple support and see what they have to say about that. Okay, because I think when I was reading the story, they offered me uh, the, the the 20 watt because they're trying to sell me something for 20 bucks so that's probably what it was this is brad go brad and that's probably their way of telling you without telling you uh that it works i don't think they would try to yeah. offer to sell you something that would not work with your phone okay I, i've been looking for something phone. i've been looking for something to, to do fast charging and then what type of saying that doesn't work with the max date the cycling the SE, i mean Okay. All right. Thanks. Yep. Okay. And we had uh, D and Dan. Okay. Or, I yeah. knew I knew that they were not giving you the charging block anymore. So that was not a concern of mine. But 
whenever I, you know, I got my phone on Friday, messed around with it in that evening. When I got to go to bed around midnight, I was 8%. So I thought I got to get a charge on this. So I pulled out a charging block I had and I pulled out my old anchor cord that I've been using for years. I got, they're like 10 foot cords and I got three of them and it would not charge my phone. So I got a different, you know, tried every one of those. They were not charging. Uh, so then I said, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to use the Apple cord. Okay, so I got out the new cord out of my box. I plug it up. Oh, now I realize the end is different. It's the USB-C, so it does not fit in my charging block. And, you know, I'm about almost panicky at that point. And uh, so... Then I happened to think about, I, my original thing was, I guess the 13 recognizes those anchor cords aren't real Apple cords, so they weren't going to charge. So then I got out my iPhone box for the SE, the original SE that I traded off, took the cord out of that box, had never been opened up before. I plug that into the phone and plug it into my USB charger and it works. Okay. Sounds like you solved your problem. Uh, well, I solved a little problem. It's got me tied mighty close to the wall though. And I don't <laughs> like that. Yeah. So oh. is, have they done something now where it won't work on anchors, USB cords? This is Brad. Oh, Brad. My guess is there's something about that anchor cord that's old and it won't tolerate the specific, the, the, rather the iPhone 13 mini that you got recognizes that that cord for some reason doesn't meet certain specifications. Whereas even your old, uh, old short three foot cord from your original 2016 iPhone SE does meet certain Apple specifications. I know that I use Apple cords with my iPhone 12 that are even older than that. Mm -hmm. And they work fine with the little square charger. Yeah. I think the Apple stuff is to a higher specification than some of this other stuff you bought. I've got a Belkin cord that I bought that works just fine with my iPhone 12. So I can't, I don't know what's going on with your anchor cord, but I would trash it and just get a new cord. Well, it's still worse on my iPad and things. But yeah, I was just kind of surprised because those anchor cords have worked all along, you know. They were, I don't know if you say Apple certified, but they, you know, Apple approved. This is Jim. This is Rick. Oh, uh, um, I was just going to say, I bought a Y connector because I like to charge and charge my phone sometimes with a direct cord and um, have my earbuds plugged in so I can continue reading my book. And sometimes I've found that once the Y adapter is plugged into the uh, port on the phone, that I have to turn the other cables upside down for them to be recognized or try them in different ports. So they say it's uh, universal, but sometimes you have to play around with the universe and go ahead, Shri. Yeah, I was just going to uh, echo about getting um, MFI certified cables. Um, that's one of the reasons why you know, you pay a little bit more for it to be MFI certified is that, you know, it goes through a different protocol with Apple. Um, I was going to tell you, if you recently bought that Anchor, I think Anchor has like an 18th month warranty. They're very good about replacing a cable if, um, you know, if you can prove, you know, proof of purchase. Um, but I would say, you know, try and get these cables that are certified. Mm -hmm. Well, I just thought, you know, here we go. Got screwed by Apple one more time. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, that answer, I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, it, oh. it helps. Thank okay, you. Okay, fantastic. All right, uh, Dan. Okay, I'm uh, a little bit confused after all these comments. So if someone could give me just a quick straight answer. Apparently, okay, if you, if you buy a MagSafe, 
charger. They're not going to throw in the power brick or power adapter. You've got to buy that separately, and that's specified in the uh, if you order online. Is that uh, correct? This is Brad. This is um, Brad and then Shree. Yeah, that's correct. It should say that in there. It should say it somewhere in the fine print. It is just a cable with a lightning, I mean, a USB, probably USB-C adapter on one end. It should tell you what it is in there. But I bought one once and I this is her didn't view. keep it because it didn't work with my case. But anyway, yeah, it's cable only. You've got to provide it in uh, a power brick. Okay, Shree and then Herbie. Yeah, so I've got a few of the MagSafe chargers here. Um, they definitely don't come with the brick. The box is extremely small. It's not even the height of a brick, so that's just a dead giveaway. You know, it's pretty pretty small. And um, I would definitely suggest that if you do get the MagSafe, the USB, you do buy the 20 watt so you can get full usage because then you're just basically, if you don't do that, you're basically not getting what you really pay for. Uh, but uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of things that Apple's going to give you with the brick anymore. Yeah, right, so you got to buy the brick separately. Is what, what you do. Yeah. Okay. And this thanks. is free. Go ahead, free. Uh, I was also going to say that you know you don't necessarily need to get an Apple 20 watt brick. Anchor makes a very solid 20 watt, and it's about I've seen it as low as eight dollars cheaper. I've seen it as somewhere around twelve dollars now. Uh, they're actually smaller than the Apple, and the and the two prongs also fold, so it's a little easier to carry. Okay. Good okay, and Herbie. I was just gonna say that yeah, if you I you know I don't know about other sources, but if you buy directly using the Apple Store app, it does make it very clear that you know the power brick is not included and you have to purchase it separately. So I don't know, like I said, I don't know about other sources, but the Apple Store app definitely does. All right. Okay, so who has another question for us? Someone who hasn't asked a question yet have one. Okay, we've got about seven minutes till halftime. So this is your seven minute warning. So, anyone else? Well, this is D. if nobody else comes okay, up. Okay, D. all right. Okay, I went into the accessibility, voiceover, audio, everything the three told me. I put my volume at 100%. I put the haptic at 100%, and I still don't feel anything when I put my finger down there to open the phone. Just a quick suggestion, then we'll open it up. But did you turn voiceover off and then back on? No, I did not. Try that, see if that works. But any anyone else have a suggestion? Hey Siri, turn off voiceover. 8.24 p.m. Hey Siri. Uh, Dee, I'm just gonna have you mute while you turn do that, voiceover. just in yeah. case. Okay. And to not set off others. So I'm gonna do a mute all, okay. And Maria, just so you know, I can actually target people individually, too, when they're being disruptive. So. Yeah, I know. I've been doing that, too. But I just figured this was faster <laughs> where I was. Thanks, though. This is Eugene. Uh, or, uh, who is that? Eugene? This is Eugene. Yeah. OK. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, Eugene. OK. Sure. Um, so I'm wondering um, about any accessibility features with Apple Pencil. Um, I've been playing around and I know there's the handwriting to text, um, which I'm still getting used to, but if anyone has any kind of tips or anything around um, that, it would be great. Apple Pencil in general. All right. Um... Jim, are you able to, do you need me to jump yeah, in here? Yeah, okay. please. Yeah, um, all right. Um, does anyone have any, well, let, let's actually, sir, um, were we, just one second, Eugene, just before we hit halftime, um, did 
uh, with with D's question on not um, hearing the uh, feeling the vibration and the the haptics and such, does anyone else have a quick suggestion for that? It sounds like it's something that we're going to have to kind of people are going to have to sort of research and you know get back to Shree. us. All right, go ahead, Street. <laughs> So uh, here's something that I did encounter and I, I report to Applin and I'm not sure if it's a bug or it's the way it's built. But so basically before we were able to increase the voiceover volume by using the rotor or, uh, you know, going to the rotor and um, turning the volume up. But what I noticed, at least on my 12 Pro right now, I have to be in in the audio to increase my voiceover volume. And it looks like that volume in, while I'm in the voiceover audio is different than when I'm in the home screen and increasing the volume up and down, which is normal. Like your normal volume up and down is controlled while you're in the home screen. But what I was experiencing is I would increase my volume on the voiceover audio, but as soon as I switch over to home screen, it went back to the home screen volume. It wasn't keeping in, in, in line with the voiceover volume. And what it seems to be is that I would have to increase, well, while you, Susan, uh, or, uh, or Dee, while you are in the settings, um, accessibility voiceover audio, and you opened up sounds and haptics, increase your volume up and tell me if the volume goes up in your sounds and haptics. This is Brad. All right, go ahead, Brad. I just confirmed what Shri said is dead on. Uh, I've been using that rotor. And when I look at my rotor and volume, it said at 90. And when I go to voiceover, audio, sounds, and haptics, my volume there shows it's set on 80. And I go out of that screen and go to my rotor, and I change my volume to something like 70, and I go back to that screen, it's still on 80. I don't know. That's, that's interesting. I would have never caught that. I would have thought it's the same. This is Shri. All right. Uh, go ahead, Shri. Uh, just curiosity question. Am I too loud? Because my I'm getting muted all the time. Uh, I was just trying to keep people muted so that there was no background noise because we keep having to do mute all. So uh, okay, I just want to make sure it's not my... out, just, We've been infeeding everybody that's staying on mute just so we can keep. Yeah, just in general, so. yeah. When folks, just in general, when you're not speaking, if you could kindly mute yourselves, that would be great. Uh, I know everyone's volume is pretty good. Um, okay, thank you. I just wanted yeah. to, so um, yeah, so this one was, you know, I just saw this um, yesterday and I couldn't quite figure it out because I was doing my recording for my cafe and my volume kept going up and down, up and down. So uh, my, my workaround has been that when I'm in sounds and haptics, when I open that, um, that button, then I increase my volume up almost at the same level as the volume that's on the master volume. Then I noticed that my audio, my, ha uh, my uh, voiceover audio and haptic is pretty, pretty strong. Uh, so that's been kind of my workaround with this issue. All right. Well, Dee, I hope that helps you out perhaps in, um, in fixing that issue. And of course, making sure that voiceover sounds in general are you know, enabled if you're not hearing other ones as well um, might help. And I know that's something you could add to the, you know, rotor or quick settings as well, if that happens to be an issue, but um, hopefully okay. some of that will help. So with that, <laughs> this is D. All right, very quickly. And then we'll get to half time. Maria, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, go ahead, D. Okay, with somebody, with the, somebody, care to look under this audio and haptics under the voice over where I raise the volume and the intensity and then see what some of those things are right below that and see if any of that has anything to do with my issue 
I don't understand what those things even are. There's several. This is this is Brad. Brad, go ahead. Those are all individual voiceover um, actions. If you go through that list, and when you open up each one, it allows you to turn on uh, or off uh, either haptics or the audio. The little voiceover has little sound effects that it makes. Um, mm -hmm. different little sounds and things when it does different things. So for but, each one of those actions, you can either turn on or off the haptic or audio feedback. You can turn them both off, or if you decide you don't want sound, but you want haptics, you turn audio off or whatever calls it sound and leave haptic on or the other way around. If you just haptics drive you crazy, you can turn those off. I mean, you know, back when I first started using an iPhone back in series uh, four or 4S, you know, we didn't get, we didn't have haptic. Haptic got added later. Right. Um, I think when the seven, but anyway, so you, you can go through each of those little act, act actions <laughs> and, and, and tweak each one the way you like it. That's what those are. Okay. This is D. I don't oh, understand what those things uh, actually, you know, what they're referring to. And all I'm asking is, is there one under there that applies to that little button that, you know, when you want to open your phone and lock it? All right. It sounds like this might be something because there is a large list of sounds. Yeah. It sounds like this might be something that uh, we're going to have to do a bit of researching into. Or D, I would okay. definitely encourage you to, um, you know, explore in the list as well and see if there is any that seems like it might um, work and, you know, try it out and kind of see if it makes a difference. So yeah. um, I, I well, think everything I've tried hasn't. I'm just looking for the haptic part mm -hmm. because, you know, so. All okay. Right. Well, Again, I okay. think, Everybody's yeah, back. I think, all yep. right, well, you know, good luck with that. And I think, you know, some of us can play with it and such as well. I think off the top of, you know, our heads, we're not going to know what the magic name is <laughs> of the sound, but hopefully we can, um, you know, all come up with something working together. So with that, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And thank you, Jim, for your help here with the first half and um, to Herbie as well. And so now uh, this is just a reminder, the iBug Buzz call and um we are uh going to just before we do introductions of folks who have joined before uh after the initial introduction so i'm maria facilitating for the second half and um some quick announcements about us about ibug uh you can find our uh website at ibugtoday.org that's I bug, I B U G T O D A Y dot org. And we encourage you to visit our website because there you can sign up for our free mailing list and you will receive helpful reminders about our events um, at the beginning of each month. Uh, we send out an email with all of the events for that month in nice headings and with all the links to join and contact information and just a great um, consolidated list. And then we also send reminders of upcoming events as they occur throughout the month. So we'd encourage you to sign up there. Also from our website, you can access our podcast recordings. You can access the information about all of the events that we have uh, going on at any time, and you can access information um, about our jump, Jumpstore mentoring program. So if you are new to the use of uh, voiceover on the iPhone and would like some assistance to get started with the basics, you can sign up to be a mentee and be matched with a qualified mentor. And conversely, if you are uh, a, a, an advanced user and you feel like you might want to uh, be a mentor and uh, help someone out to get started with the use of their uh, iPhone, we would certainly welcome you. And you can also find uh, the mentoring application on our website uh, as well. So again, ibugtoday.org. And there are other resources there also. On social media, uh, we have a Facebook group, which is a great place to ask questions uh, during the week in between these calls. And that is at facebook.com slash groups slash iBug today. 
Uh, you can follow iBug on Twitter and on Instagram. And that is at iBug today. Uh, and in terms of Twitter, uh, Herbie is our Twitter master and posts all kinds of uh, news and rumors and deals and um, all kinds of Apple related goodness. So do follow us there. Um, all as we mentioned uh, at the beginning of the call that these calls are being recorded. And that is because all of our um, recordings of all of our calls um, are archived on our website and they can be searched there by a topic so you can pull up the um, page of all of our calls and and do a, a find on page for what you're looking for and hopefully you will uh, find that we've discussed it on a call um, the uh, I bug buzz podcast so meaning the podcast for this call is available in various places it's in the apple podcasts directory it's on spotify the alexa um and you can of course find it in any other podcast app of your choice by searching and subscribing to iBug Buzz. Um, also, the recordings of these calls are available on our YouTube channel, which you can find uh, by searching for iBug Today. And we encourage you to subscribe there to our channel as well. And so um, for the upcoming week, and this is by no means all of our events because we have a lot of them going on. And as I said, I'd encourage you to visit our website and sign up for our mailing list um, to find out about all of them ahead of time. But for this upcoming week, tomorrow, so that is uh, Tuesday, the uh, 5th of October, we have our iBug mini buzz on Clubhouse. So it's like this, except it is a one hour and on our iBug uh, Today Club on Clubhouse. So this is from 5 to 6 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, again on Clubhouse, so this is on the 6th of October, we have the Mac Buzz. So uh, any questions about Mac uh, operating system and hardware, uh, this is one of our Mac events. And this happens from 5 to 7 p.m. again, Central Time on our iBug Today Club on Clubhouse. On Thursday, um, 7th of October, we have our iBug Trekkie Talk. So if you are a fan of Star Trek episodes, we watch um, the uh, we watch a couple of episodes each time and then we uh, talk about them. So uh, on Thursday, it's going to be the Star Trek Discovery um, season two, episode 13 and season two, episode 14, and that is this Thursday, this Thursday on this Zoom line, the same one as this call, uh, and that is from 8 to 9.30 p.m. Central Time. And on Friday, we, and we'll be coming back to this, we have our Friday night at the virtual movies, and that is on this Zoom line. We watch a described uh, movie, the audio track of the same, um, and that begins, there's a pre-movie social time at 7.30 p.m. Central, and the movie begins at 8 p.m. Central. And on Sunday, on the 10th of October, we have our iBug Cafe, and that is facilitated by Shri, and that is a deep dive into um, an app or a related group of apps or features um, that takes place from 4 to 6 p.m. Central, and this time we'll be talking about widgets and the app library and tips for improving the battery life of your uh, device. So do join us for that. And a reminder that all iBug services are free. So that means there are no membership dues or fees. So with that, I did mention that we have a movie and um, I am going to turn it over to Jim. To We, we, we uh, aren't uh, so creative that we're going to come up with clues. So I'm sorry to um, spoil the fun. If some of you are looking forward to um, Michael's uh, movie Minutia, he'll have to uh, stay tuned to next week for the return of that. Um, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to Jim, who will tell us what our movie is going to be for this Friday. Okay, iBug fans, uh, I hope everyone is unmuted because, you know, don't tell anybody, but I did come up with a clue. <laughs> well, surprise, so, surprise. Yeah, why not? You know, so 
This movie is from the year 1944. Okay. And it stars a couple people. And it's about a murder. And it's about insurance. And one of the main characters who was in this movie, the male leading actor, was also in a TV show that ran from 1960 to 1972. And in that show, there was a grandfather, an uncle, and three sons. So you get double points if you can name the male act. Go, Brad. Fred McMurray and double right. indemnity. You got it. You win a railroad track. Whoa. <laughs> Way to go, Brad. <laughs> nice job. This is what can I say? Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> you can use it to travel around the country. Th this right. is one. Herbie. Yeah, that's if you have one track, you have one track mind. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, Herbie. So is that railroad track painted in the official iBug colors? Absolutely. And you know Boy. what? You get to enjoy that track and repaint it and sand it down if you like, no matter what. Do I do I get the other track if I can name the female lead? Yes, you do. That would be Barbara Stanwyck. Okay, so you win both tracks. <laughs> oh, I've seen the movie. Oh, very good. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. It's famous. It's a famous movie. Okay. Well, you know, they said we didn't have to do these, but I thought we ought to do something. You know, just got to keep the the momentum going. Um, we got to keep inter the tradition. I, right. I put a stop to the momentum, didn't I? <laughs> no, no, you were fine. You did exactly what I wanted you to do. What can I say? Yeah. yeah, that was good. Same I think that might have been. I think Thank that might have been the first. So that was a good clue. Yeah, yeah, that was like the first time it was done so it's quickly. Like all five clues in one, though. So. <laughs> well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Well, you okay. did good. You did good. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Now, do we need to introduce everybody? Again? Yes, we're about to do that now. Yes. So safe travels, Brad, on your double <laughs> track, it. and <laughs> you got to get your own train, though. <laughs> That's right, yes. Or maybe if you want to get in good shape, get a hand car so you have to pump it up and down the tracks. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a single track because you said he had a single track mind. Well, yeah, but he guessed the female star, so we got a second. Oh, that's got a right. Second. Yeah. So he gets a double track. Sorry, Sorry. Okay. Sorry Brad. Well, we'll, we'll show for yeah. Brad around. Yeah. We'll show okay. for Brad and Kathy around. <laughs> Who else came in? That, All right. Uh, very good. So, yes. Uh, who would like to say, for those who joined us after our first introductions at the beginning, if you'd like to say hi, feel free. Nikki this is Nancy Francisco. from Bowen. All what, right. What? Hi, Nikki. And hi, Nancy. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> hi, this is Carol in San Antonio. All right. Uh, welcome. And Kathy from Shelton. I mean, from... Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, well Where are you from? Yeah. Maybe you can be in two places at once. Roy from Fort Worth. Hey, Roy. Welcome. All right. Anyone else? Freddie from Galveston County. Hello. Hey, Randy. Hi. All right. All Anybody right. Else? Anyone else? All right, then. Then we will move uh, to our next question. And I believe um, uh, out of uh, fairness uh, to Eugene, I did mention before the halftime that we'd come back. So um, I will bring up, he was asking about the accessibility features of Apple Pencil, uh, mentioning the handwriting to text and was wondering if anyone knew of any other accessibility features. So anyone have any comments on that? All right, this then. Is Shri. Okay, go ahead, Shri. So um, I am using a, a pencil on my iPad. Um, what I was hoping is, you know, I was gonna save my thumb by doing, instead of using my finger, I was gonna use a pen. But mm -hmm. what I was a little disappointed is, uh, you know, I was hoping to get more precise, you know, picking things up with voiceover and I didn't experience that. Like when I used voice memo, I was hoping that I could get my um, starting and ending point much more accurate because I was using a pencil, but it didn't do any difference. It was basically the same as using my finger. Uh, 
the only advantage that I was uh, found is that I can reach uh, much further with that with the pencil, you know, around the iPad than having to move my hands around. But all the gestures that I performed, it worked well with the pencil. All right, very interesting. All right, anyone else with experiences with the pencil? This is Kathy. All right, go ahead, Kathy. So is there um, a special feature? That, is there a whole other thing that you can use a pencil for? I mean, other than writing with your finger. And the, my second question is, does anybody, I've, I had, when I was, when I was teaching, I had a couple of clients who never typed before. And I always wondered, could they use the Apple, the iPhone, using just the finger with, with letters? Um, when I try and use the letters, and of course, I'm not a good, I know my alphabet, but I'm not really like, but anyway, I, yeah, I can get most of the letters to, but there's some things it's tricky to do. I can't remember. It's like every time I did a C, it would C and O, or, you know, there were certain things that were tricky. But um, is, it, is the pencil just using a pencil instead of your finger, or is it another attachment that has other features? Is this right. Does it, uh, okay. Uh, go ahead, Shri. So, um, you know, for a, for a blind person, you know, I just basically use it as a finger. But I know for like sighted people, based on how much pressure they put on the screen, the pencil gets lighter or darker. Um, they can do, you know, a lot of moving stuff around, you know, like a drag and drop with the pencil. Mm -hmm. um, but, but for me, it's more of um, writing. Um, I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't specifically used it for handwriting, but I'm being told that it does a pretty good translation uh, with, with, the, with the writing uh, on the pencil. Um, but one thing I was going to say, Kathy, you know, one of the things that I use for handwriting is I use the, the handwriting tool on the rotor. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Oh, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. allows me to right. use the handwriting on the iPhone. Cool. All right. Uh, anyone else on this pencil or improving the handwriting? All right. Um, this is Marie. I'll make a note. I know there is an app whose name is escaping me. I want to say it's called something like do it right or something, but the right is spelled like W-R-I-T-E. I don't know if it's still around, but um, that I remember, and I think it was like one word, um, you know, like D-O-I-T-W-R-I-T-E. And it was meant to help with uh, uh, like learning or refreshing your memory on the uh, letters and, and the numbers and such um, in handwriting mode. So that might help. I know, um, for me, I've just, I mean, I found it slower to, to do things like I've, you know, used like Braille screen input, but it's definitely an option, the handwriting. And I know I found just like practicing in, you know, notes um, to be a help, but you know, that, uh, you know, assumes knowing the letters and stuff. That's why I thought of as an, like an additional support that do it right. If it's still out there that it might um, help with that. So um, not sure if anyone knows if that's still around, but it might just be worth a look in the app store. I think it did cost like a, I don't know, dollar ninety nine or something. I, it's honestly been a very long time. <laughs> since this I've is down. Chanel. Oh. All right, go ahead, Chanel. Yeah, I think I've had it. I had it on my phone for the longest time, and I tried it, but you know, not being familiar with handwriting at all. I mean, it was interesting um, that I kept getting a lot of. I, I think it could be a useful tool, but yeah, I don't remember. Um, I just wanted to confirm that, yes, that app is out there and I have used it. Um. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, and who is that? I missed. This is Brad. Brad. Brad, go ahead. I've got the app, too. I've had it a long time. Uh, I played with it. Um, I, I didn't have the same issues as, as Chanel because I was once upon a time sighted and so I could write. But it reminded me of the gestures that you used to use on one of those old Palm Pilots. Um, and it's okay. It uh, so you know you might give it a try. I don't. I was gonna say I didn't know if it was still available or not. I've had it for years. I think it was like a dollar ninety nine, but it was a cool little tutorial. I need to get it out and try it again. 
All right. Very good. So thank you for that. Yeah. And hopefully, um, you know, Kathy, that might help you out a little bit. All right. Very good. Who would like to ask the next question? This is Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Um, well, first of all, has I, I loaded the latest, I guess, update 1501, but I guess the, um, the bug um, with using the clock apps, uh, uh, different apps, like for time announcements, I guess that hasn't been fixed yet because I turned on some of my hourly chime things and they're still not working. And also, um, I'm getting a lot. I'm wondering if anyone else with an Apple Watch is getting it. It says um, sign into iCloud for verification. And I always check not now because when I tried it once, there was a scribble option or there was a way to use your phone's screen as a keyboard because you have to enter your, your password to do that. And I'm wondering if anybody's experienced that or how they dealt with that. Thanks. All right. Uh, anyone with Apple Watches, have you had this screen pop up? Oh, All right. Um, I think I heard Brad first, and then yeah, Herbie. <laughs> I, I have. I, I have. I don't. I don't. It's been a long time. I have been prompted for that before, but I've never had to actually enter it. I think what I did is opened the watch app on my iPhone, went to Apple ID, tapped on it there, and it showed my Apple ID was already in there. And I don't think I ever had to do it. I think it just did it when I paired the watch. I have seen in text messaging, if I open a, a text message on my watch, that that new thing that if my phone is nearby and unlocked, it brings up a keyboard on my app on, on my iPhone. I would think if it keeps dogging you to do that and the keyboard pops up on your iPhone, I would just type in my Apple ID password and see if that pacifies it and well, makes it leave you alone. This is Marty, and the problem is I tried it. I wanted to do it with the, with the phone's keyboard. I couldn't get the keyboard to come up. It said something about press for the keyboard, and, and oh. I didn't want to mess up my password on my phone. So this I just Brad. always do the now, not now button and move on. This is Brad. Okay. Try having your phone unlocked or unlock your phone and then tap on that thing to do it on your phone and that should bring up that keyboard that's a new thing in ios 15 and i find that if i've got my phone nearby and i'm doing something else on it and i want to respond to a text message on my watch just because you know i was doing something on my watch uh, anyway i can't i'd like to get it to stop popping that keyboard up this is this is marty that does the does the watch app have to be open on the phone because i had my phone unlocked and I still couldn't get that keyboard off. Um, oh, Shree. I, I, no, I'll wait till Brad's done. No, this is Brad. I've only done it with text messaging. And oh, okay. I, I actually had the uh, NASCAR app open and I was listening to um, race um, um, scanner radio and it just tends to not lock itself and i was text messaging with somebody on my watch and when i go to send one because they've changed the way messaging works on the watch now it's more like regular text messaging and there's a edit field and everything when i tap on that it would kick off the um, keyboard on my phone and i'm like i'm just got to remember to make sure the phone is locked before i mess with messaging so i would just have your watch the app open i did not have you know I'm, i wasn't doing anything that involved the watch app so and i was getting that keyboard but i would think that if you have your phone open unlocked and you and it's prompting you to enter something and you tap on that edit field that might just kick off that keyboard on your phone oh, okay thank uh, you all right um go ahead we'll take a three and then i'm gonna come back to herbie then after 
So um, I encountered this a little bit ago, and what I ended up doing is just unpairing my phone, and I repaired it, and that question went away. All right. Okay. Uh, and then Herbie, go ahead. Um, they ended up covering it also. Okay. And then Chanel uh, had her it hand. Was an accident on it, her okay. Good. It was an accident. All right. All right. Totally no accident. worries. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Uh, anyone else then on this question? All right. Well, Marty, hopefully you got some good ideas and hopefully some of that will work out. Thanks. All right. Who would like to ask our next question if you can fit, fit it into four minutes before our eye bug yes. bite? Yes, go ahead, Kathy. Kathy. Yep, go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. My question is I updated, well, I changed from AT&T to um, T-Mobile. And um, one of the things that I think has changed since then, because it's I haven't updated lately, my text message screen is totally different and I can't it used to be that you would go to the bottom of the text messages and there'd be the options for iPhone and other messages that's not there any longer I don't quite know how to I mean I can do you know do Siri and say text somebody or I can respond to somebody who just texted me but I can't just go into my text screen and um, the way I used to. And I also don't see the last response or the final message. Like if I select somebody and there's a whole list of the texts back and forth, usually the bottom one isn't there. So if I'm trying to find out what did they say, something something's different with that screen. Has this anybody is heard of this? All right, uh, go ahead, Herbie. So are you talking about the Messages app or something different? Because you've gotten no, completely just... lost. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's just in my phone. It's not a, it's just the text messaging. Like it's, you know, on the bottom of the screen. If I go into, what does it say? I think it says message. It's not the, it's not the, that other app. It's, it's just the way you do a text message. Well, so are you doing a text message from contacts? Are you doing it within the messages app? Are you doing it from the lock screen? No, from from the regular screen. I must be saying so, the wrong word. Yeah, so, so Kat, like when you're on your home screen, like with all of your icons where you have mail and calendar and pho photos and like whatever's on your screen, your page of apps, is there in, I, I assume when you're saying in the bottom, maybe like in the dock of your phone, is there an app that's called Messages? Well, yeah, I can't check to see if I'm saying it wrong, but I thought, you know, it's like the fourth one over or something. Third or fourth one over, it said it's like text messaging. Or so if it says messages, yeah. So, right. So, like the arrangement of, you know, people's home screens might be different. So, yeah, if it's an app called messages, when you open that app, um, are you seeing, like, if you flick to the right, are you seeing uh, things about like composing a message and then searching for a message? And then you're seeing conversations that you have? <laughs> I'm seeing the conversations, but I'm not seeing the search or compose. And <laughs> I'm not seeing the bottom part where it used to have where you could put, put your own message in. Yeah. So for the bottom, and, you need to actually open the conversation. Okay. Like but you have a list of people, right? right? Like you have your list. Yep. And when you open the conversation, then you should be able to see at the bottom it still doesn't have like you know it doesn't have the bot the bottom isn't right and the other thing it does new that it did used to do before is it gives people their it calls people by their initials sometimes hmm and i don't know um oh. and so i can't go in and just hit go down to the bottom and put in you know hit the button that says I message and and then start doing. sometimes it seems like sometimes it's better to do that and then hit um well we're coming to the end of four minutes probably that, that's right but, this is jim all right uh go ahead jim is it on this and then we'll yes, move? yes it is yeah okay yep go ahead 
So what I was going to suggest is maybe go into your settings and look under messages and see how things are configured there. Oh. Okay, that's where I would I, take a look at. I never thought of that. Okay. This Thanks. is Brad. Herbie. All right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, we'll take Brad first. Real quick, I just switched from Sprint to T-Mobile because uh, I had to. And it's like everything was new. Okay. And I did have to, I, I didn't have to do it on my phone, but on my wife's, I did. And to go, like uh, Jim just said, into settings, messages, and I had to enable um, iMessage. And that might be one of the things you're, that you're seeing. Oh. It's a little different. I had to go through and then I had to uh, designate a phone number or, or whatever I wanted to begin, you know, to use for iMessages. And like on my wife's, it showed both her phone number, uh, which when I tapped that became the default. And then it also showed her Apple ID. And I tapped that like an email address that you can also receive messages from. So I tapped on both of those to enable them. And of course, it asked me, which one do you want to use to begin messages from? And of course, I choose the phone number. Now, what's interesting is I didn't have to do that to my phone. And we both switched from Sprint to T-Mobile, you know, same thing, same time, same day. And we're both on iOS 15, we did this just <laughs> last week. So that might be something like Jim said, go check out your, your messaging settings and see, make oh, sure everything's nice. set up like that. Okay. All right. Very good. And we'll just, we'll take uh, Herbie and then we're going to go to our iBug bite. I was just going to say, definitely check your settings because I did, I've switched from at t to T-Mobile a long time ago. And I can tell you that it, you know, the messaging app is no different between the providers. So it's definitely something in the messages on the iPhone settings. So I would definitely like Brad and everybody else, Jim said, you know, go to settings, go to messages and make sure all your stuff is enabled. And then you, your messages app should look the way that you're used to. Okay. Thanks. All right. Very good. Good luck with that, Kathy. All right. Now we're going to switch. I'm going to turn it over to Jim for our iBug Byte segment. So, uh, Jim, we're not able to... Okay, are... okay there you are. Yes. I'm sorry. I just had to <laughs> no. unmute my phone and I was doing that. So so what I wanted to talk about tonight is everybody's updated to um, iOS 15 or 15.01. And some people may be having issues with um, Task Switcher and the haptic vibrations. And I was going to talk about that a little bit. So what you can do to go in and fix the test switching bug uh, is to go to settings. Settings. James O'Neill, Apple's personal hotspot, up notif sounds and haptics button. And go to Focus, screen time, but general button. Can display and prep home script accessibility. Go accessibility. Accessibility features help you voice zoom, dis motion, audio, spoken go to content, motion. motion button. There's a setting here called reduced motion. Auto play message effect with reduce motion off. Reduce and the turn motion that off. Interface, including the and that will fix the uh, task switching um, issue. A 10 04 PM accessibility back setting. So motion now, button. as far as the haptic feedback, access vision heading voiceover, you go to voiceover. Button. Voiceover on Brill. Voiceover boss audio button. Audio and auto select speak during audio. Any external. Whoops, I'm begging your pardon. PM voiceover back button. access audio but verbosity but audio but activities rotor rotor type quick setting Nav navigate images what? always her voice over recognition button sorry Spe i'm speaking lost rate, here speaking rate Vo learn more voice speaking rate speaking rate speech but voice over recognition verbosity button audio but commands button activities but rot rotor action type quick if you're looking for audio i think you just yeah. went past yeah type rot rotor Activity command audio. Well, there, button. there's audio. Settings and haptics button. Ah, there we are. Settings and haptics. 
Audio docket sounds and haptics. Sounds and haptics. And then item focused, item activated, Navi navigation wrap, full scroll page, boundary reached, but no item discovery. Interact, no item discovery. No item discovery. You turn that, you go into that and turn that off, and that fixes the problem of uh, haptic vibrations. Okay. Any questions? Uh, this is Maria. Can you just clarify what is the problem that fixes with the so, haptics? So, no item discovery is is turned on in the latest update. And if you go into Navig navigation item navig scroll boundary reached scroll pay, haptic and interaction item focus item activated navigation wrap, navigation wrap scroll pay boundary reached no item discovered button no item discovery tap on that uh huh preview button preview haptic off and turn Double haptic tap off setting. Right, but what does that solve? What what is that the issue? solves the problem? That solves the problem of um, when you move your finger around the phone, you feel all these haptic vibrations ah, going on. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I don't know whether you've encountered that or not, but this fixes that yeah. issue. Yeah. So in other words, it makes it so that when you're moving around, I just want to clarify, I, I, I understand now what you're saying. So when you're moving around and there's nothing on the screen, if you turn this off, you won't get that like very rapid fire haptic, right? Right. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Okay. You won't yeah. feel like your phone's asleep. Yes. <laughs> 10 07 right. p.m. All right. Sounds and haptics. Back button. Audio. Okay. No item discovered. Any other question? <laughs> All right. Any other question on these two tips? This is Gail. All right. Yes, go ahead, Gail. Gail. Um, the first one, I think uh, when you're reducing motion, um, that was uh, for the app switcher, right? For uh, iOS the app 15? Switcher. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I haven't uh, done the 15 update. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. This is Shree. Go ahead, go ahead. Shree. So on that app switcher, did they specify um, which devices is having that issue? Because I have not experienced that. No. Uh, well, they I know they did so, say some people. I saw this on Twitter where they say a lot of people were experiencing that issue. So um, uh, this is. Shri. I know. I know. Go ahead, Shri. No, no, no. Go ahead and finish your thought because I was just going to tell you. Something. No, because I I I did run across that and. You'd go into the app switcher and you'd swipe left or right and it would not read some of the items. I, I keep a lot of apps open in my app switcher and it would not read a lot of the apps. And what I actually had to do was stop and go back, you know, because I tend to go through my apps pretty quick when I'm in the app switcher, you know, I guess a lot of us do. So um, go ahead. Okay, go ahead, Marty. Oh, yep. um, so, um, one second. Oh, We're going to oh, take Shree sure. first, and then we'll come back to you. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. uh, like I said, on my machine or on my phone, I have not noticed that problem. Matter of fact, um, it's actually working better for me now with the update, especially like when I'm closing. Like I, I'm using. I don't use the three finger swipe up to close. You know, I, I flick up, and then when it tells me to close, I just double tap, and then I just double tap the rest of the apps that are open. Uh -huh. previously when i do that sometimes the app will get stuck but here it's just like going really fast so wow. i was just more really curious as to like if they wow. identify what devices are having this issue well I, I i noticed i had it and i did read where other people were having the same issue too i saw that um well the the update came out last monday and i saw it like tuesday or wednesday okay what phone uh, do you have i have the 10r okay this All right, uh, go ahead, Mar go ahead, Marty, and then we'll go back. Yeah, I was just going to ask this app switcher thing. Is that just for the tens and above? In other words, that's, that that doesn't does that apply to people with home buttons? Well, it's or it's not the issue of the home button. It's when you're in the app switcher itself. Um, oh, okay. I've had that issue. You know. All right, Kathy. Go ahead. All right, um, go ahead, Chanel. We're going to go to Chanel. Yeah, so I've definitely had that issue on my iPhone 12 Pro, and so has Herbie. So I don't know why, but but turning off the reduced motion definitely fixes it. 
Um, yeah. So All right. thanks for pointing that out. And I did, I'm glad that that somebody discovered that. So anyway, okay. I'm done. Okay. Absolutely. All right. And go ahead, Kathy. Has anybody noticed it's, it seems to me like when you're in the um, app switcher, it used to be the whole phone, you know, if you touched anywhere, you would be on the, the different apps, but now it seems like it's limited to one section of the phone. And if you read other parts of the phone, it's still on the app you were working in. Yeah, and I've, so I've noticed. So, I've noticed that too. You have to be more in the center of the screen. Yeah, and it's and so sometimes you think you're having you're not in the app switcher or something because you're not at the right part of the screen. But right, if you right. move, yeah, that's that's yeah. weird. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Any other questions on the iBug Bites? All right. Very good. Well, then, thank you, Jim, for those My pleasure. enlightening bits of wisdom. All right. Very good. Who would like to ask then our next question? Someone who is, uh, does someone who hasn't had, who hasn't asked one yet to have a question? All right. Um, anyone? Uh, yes, go ahead, David. Oh, yeah. And that, that problem with the app switcher, uh, I've noticed the way to get around that is just to do the three finger left and right swipe like you're doing uh, switching home screens. The, you know, the three finger vertical back and forth, three finger. Oh, um, uh, like horizontally, <clears throat> you mean? Uh, like left to, to right? Left and right, like you're yeah. flipping between your home screens, uh huh, or like a doc, a page in a document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that way you can get to all your apps because I I know what she said too. Like it only show you certain couple of your apps and it stopped. But I knew I had a bunch of stuff loaded, mm -hmm. and when I did the three finger, I found a bunch of apps you know that were still loaded that uh -huh. it didn't find until I did that. <clears throat> That's interesting. I'll try that. And then you can do the three finger swipe up to like yeah. Close it real quick. Uh, Just yeah. do three to the right and then up to close if you want or, or go skip to the next one. All right. Very good. It's a shame there isn't a way to close all apps at once, you know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice to have a yeah. close all. Um, Absolutely. Just kill everything. This is Shri. Yeah. Go ahead, all right, Shri. go ahead, Shri. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Jim, I was wondering, uh, something just caught my curiosity here. What happens if you um, not use the app switcher and just do a four finger swipe left and right. Do you know if you can still switch between apps that way? You know, I haven't tried. I haven't tried that. I, I this is Brad. That. Yeah, go, Brad. All right, go ahead, Brad. Yeah. Yes, Sorry, you can Brad. use four fingers and swipe either left or right, and that will switch apps. This is free. All right. I, I was go just going to ask Jim if he disabled the um, the feature and accessibility that you just um, explained. And I was just kind of curious if it, if that gets stuck, if you're swapping between apps. Which? Uh, reduce which motion? Yeah, just turn the reduce motion back on and then try doing a four finger swipe left on your on your device. Oh, I'm just okay. curious if that causes the same problem or that you know that it doesn't cause a problem. It's just more of a curiosity question. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll right. try that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Freddy. something to, to look into. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Freddie. Um, my question, I had a question, uh, comment, yep. um, my, um, I, I'm having trouble, uh, closing out of, uh, music when I'm in music, a lot of times, I guess it's, I, I just noticed it lately. Okay. Um, can you describe a bit, like, how are you trying to close it and like, what is happening? Um, just, um. Like, you know, like I close, like just regular closing out of an app. Like you're going into the app switcher and wanting yes. to completely close it? Yes, just to close out of it. Uh-huh. And, and what happens when you, like, when you try and close it? What is it? It just stays there in the app switcher? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Interesting. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on this? I guess my Mr. immediate Jeff. question. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Now, does it close out or does it keep playing for uh, a event, uh, eventually? Uh, uh, but if I double, I'll, I would, I would, I would, if I tried to double tap it, 
and swipe to the right, and then eventually it'll close out. Okay, because I, I'm wondering, because I know when I play Pandora Radio on, on my phone, that's the only music app I use right now. Um, and um, I know if I am going to go do something else and I want to close it out, I'll uh, flick up and then uh, I'll be in settings, if you will. And it might take, you know, I'll go in the app switcher and close it down. And it might take a second or two or three to stop playing the music. And I think just because it's buffering, you know, and that may be, yeah, that may be, it. you know, so it takes like two or three seconds for it to stop playing. Right. Well, see, I yeah. haven't noticed it in the, as much in, you know, in the other, um, apps just just in the music because yeah so. this is brad all right go ahead brad yeah a um, couple things um i haven't experienced this i uh something jim just said may reminded me of something though um before you try to do this stop playing the music do a two-finger double tap or hit the pause button or something oh, then nice. when you open the app switcher i'm not sure how you're trying to close the app but if you'll notice, if you put one finger in the center of the screen and then flick up like, you know, you're doing like in the actions rotor, it should switch between two states, um, activate or, or, or close, I believe is what it is. And you got two choices and it stays on, uh, and by default, I believe it's on activate. So if you open the app switcher and you just double tap on the app, it's going to open it right back up but you can either flick up and you should hear it say close. Of course, if you flick up again, it's gonna say activate because you either can flick up or down. It doesn't matter which one, but it's gonna change between activate or close. You can also um, do like was just mentioned a little bit ago, take three fingers and just swipe up and that will close whichever app is selected in the app switcher which should be the one you just had you know if you're in an app and you open the app switcher that active app is the one that's on top of the stack right there you should be able to do three finger up should close it it may take a second or so because sometimes it's it's got stuff going on but certainly if it's playing music it'll take a second or so to close but try okay. that all right. Okay. And this is and this is Maria. I'll just make a comment too. I've sometimes noticed like voiceover. It's as though it like remains focused on the prior screen, and then it like doesn't refresh to reflect the latest change. So sometimes if I only because I tend to close the apps after I'm done using them, and so say I have one left, like say music, for example, I do use that as well. So. I close it and sometimes it'll still claim that music is there in the app switcher, but I am like pretty sure I've closed it. And so then, and this is like, even, you know, I'll touch it and flick. And then I uh, will just in case, like I'll go home and to, to like kind of clear that out. And then if I open the app switcher from there, it will tell me that there's nothing in the app switcher. So like, in fact, it closed it. But you know what I mean? Like it, it, it did close it, but it acted like it didn't. Basically, it's like it didn't clear out the, like the voiceover buffer or something for the app switcher. It's very strange, and it doesn't happen all the time. But it has happened to me, so I do wonder if that's happening too. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else on this one for Freddie? All right. Well, hopefully you have some good suggestions there and you can get that to better behave <laughs> all right very good who would like to ask our next question all right no no facebook questions here this is with me. <laughs> Go all ahead, right, D. D. Yeah. oh sorry Maria. questions tonight no questions okay <laughs> Today, I had a um, PM. I had a meeting on WebEx. On my new phone, I was not able to get into WebEx. Now, I'm wondering if... So, finally, I got into it on my iPad. 
but I'm kind of wondering if maybe I didn't take time to look yet that maybe since it was a new device I had to sign in or perhaps I did not have WebEx in the uh, Apple Cloud. So maybe it didn't carry over with the settings and. Oh, I see like you're, you're, you're saying like maybe you, the WebEx app wasn't installed, perhaps. Well, I should have been installed, but I hadn't ever signed in on it on the phone yet. And like, had it been in the iCloud, wouldn't it have carried over from the, you know, the iPad and stuff like that? Yeah, like your username and password. Um, Go ahead. Uh, was that Brad? Mr. Brad. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. How'd you switch over from your old phone to your new phone? Uh, I went to the store and they did the copy thing from okay, one to the other. Okay, okay, okay. It did not sign in. You got to open the app and sign in using your user ID and password. And if the app gives you any trouble, I would suggest deleting the app and re-downloading the app. It's been a long time since I've used the WebEx app on my iPhone. It worked okay, but I do remember having to download it, um, having to sign in. I can't remember if it prompted me to create user ID, password, whatever, but I didn't have any problem with it. But if they did the thing where they they transferred your data over at the store. They held your phone up and they started it downloaded for the cloud. You're going to have to sign in pretty much to everything. It may have downloaded all your stuff, your apps, but you're going to have to sign in with a user ID and password. Okay. So, so if that's I that's my guess. Don't have I don't think I put the password in passwords, which I should have. Uh, if I delete the app and start a new one re-download it, then I can change my password, right? At that time. This is Brad. Go ahead, Brad. Most things have a forgot password thing. So if you remember your user ID, which is probably your, your email address, there's more than uh -huh. likely a forgot password and it'll send you an email with a okay. link that you can activate and take you to a web page to change your password. Okay, well, I didn't see one in there. But also, I kind of had the same issue tonight, I think with... Uh, coming in here. So I grabbed my iPad again, and I actually think I came in on the phone with it. I mean, you know, uh, Wi-Fi calling. Because I was about oh. three, four minutes late, and it kept saying, uh, host will let you in in a minute. And then finally it opened up. Yeah, so D, that is because we're using the waiting room, and you had to wait for, I, oh. I, for either myself or Herbie, whoever it was who admitted you. I think I might have, um, but it doesn't match, or one of us. So that's why that happened. That has nothing to do with the why. That's the way this meeting is set up. And um, if this helps you, your name does show up with the word iPad. So I think you did just join in via the app on your iPad. Okay. So, okay. FYI. Thank you. But yeah, probably what Brad said, that sounds that like adds more weight to that because it sounds like the same thing is happening. Like Brad was saying, you're going to have to sign in to all of your apps. All right. So yeah. Well, see, I've got my phone on 15.01, but my iPad is still on 14.8 or whatever the latest thing was. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this has more to do with the fact that your phone, like you said, you got the new device, right? So right. the transfer, it, it's not the iOS update. It's the fact that you had the date to transfer, which you didn't transfer your credentials, you know, okay. over. So. Okay. Yeah. I haven't done this oh. in seven years, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I need to buy new phones every year so I can remember. Oh, yes. <laughs> indeed so hopefully yeah you and hope like i know with zoom you should have a forgot password but then again if you change remember though if you change you know the password depending on the app and such and if it syncs if you do change your password um using the one device you might have to sign in on your other device as well with that new password okay thank you all right good luck with that it'll take a while but hopefully you won't have to do it again <laughs> for a long time all right. Who would like, we have five more minutes left or six more minutes. Who would like to ask the next question? Five now. Who would like to ask the next question in our final five minutes? This is Dan. All right, go ahead, Dan. Brad said something interesting. And uh, I want to 
confirm this or something. Apparently you can, because I haven't done this yet. Apparently you can, when you want to transfer all your old data from the old phone to the new phone, apparently you can put, put the old phone next to the new phone and that will automatically, automatically cause iCloud to activate and start transferring the data. Is that correct? This is Jim. Uh, yes, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, what you have to do is you have to hold the new phone over the old phone and your camera has to see the old phone, okay? And uh, it takes a, a, a shot of the um, screen and then that helps with it. It'll say initiating transfer and it'll back stuff up to the cloud and then transfer it down to the new phone. At least that's how it worked for me when I had to get a phone replaced back in, uh, what was it, 2019? This is huh? Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Um, it depends on how old your old phone is, I believe. Um, I, I know I could do it with the eight, uh, updating my eight to my SE, but I'm thinking that I read somewhere that anything before an eight that doesn't work. This but, is Nancy. Oh, uh, go ahead, Nancy. So I have a seven and it does work with the seven, but oh, I was good. gonna say, okay. if you have trouble with the camera thing, you can also request that it do, it gives you a code to put into, I can't remember how it goes. Uh, oh, you verification have, code, yeah. Oh. Yeah, you get a verification code from your old phone to the new phone, and then it will transfer that way. So you don't have to try and line up the camera, but it's cool when it works right. Yeah. Yep. Because I had to go from 10R to 10R. Go ahead, Shri. All right, oh, go sorry. ahead, Shri. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, especially, you know, doing that method, if you have difficulty, um, contact Apple Accessibility because they can see the screen. Then they can see what's on the screen that you're pointing to your old phone. That's the way I did it. I cheated, but <laughs> Apple Accessibility will definitely help you with you that. You cheating. Do. You got it done. <laughs> um, okay, this is D. All right, go ahead, D. Okay. Is there a second chance? Like if some of my stuff did not transfer, could I uh, do something again? Do that again or something? To get it? All right. Uh, I think I heard Herbie first. <laughs> no, wow. Brad. Oh, I'm. No, what? Yeah, I, no, I spoke. Yeah, oh, go, go, ahead. go, Herbie. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I was going to say the only way I can honestly think of to do it would be not worth it, in my opinion, is a complete reset because once it, you know, once the phone is active, you know, it can't do anything. But um, you'd almost be better off just signing into iCloud, and making sure your old phone's back up to, backed up to that. And, you know, I think you would be able to. It wouldn't maybe sync up, but you'd at least be able to get like you know see all your app history and all that type of thing. If um, you're so that's what I would recommend is signing into iCloud. But maybe Brad has a different suggestion. All right. Uh, yes, go ahead, Brad. Yeah. Uh, no, I was going to say what Herbie said. It's a one shot deal. You get to do it when the phone is new and being set up for the first time. Um, be it that you're going to transfer from one phone to another or you're going to do a restore from iCloud. Um, you would have to do that. I don't know. Do you still have your old phone? Yes. Okay. The only other way I can think of is what I always do is do an encrypted backup of the old phone to a Mac, but not everybody's got a Mac and, um, and set them up that way. I believe the restoring from one phone to another does like when you restore from encrypted backup because you have just verified that you have the old phone. I believe it does me. restore passwords and things like that. Whereas an iCloud, restoring from an iCloud backup, which is probably what they did for you at the store, um, that does not. That's where you have to enter all your user ID and passwords. All right. And I'll just make a quick note that encrypted backups can be done to um, Windows PCs as well with uh, iTunes. Um, so uh, go ahead, Herbie. 
No, that's exactly what I was going to say is that oh, okay. we can do it with iTunes. <laughs> right, so so. Okay. And then, yes, go ahead, Shree. Um, just out of curiosity, what were you missing after you restored your device? Excuse me. What was the question? What were you missing when you restored your device? Oh, uh, the one thing that I really noticed last night, I went into Bard and I had no books on there. That's uh, this is Jim. Ah, uh, that's yeah. Go ahead, Jim. That's common with Bard. Your mm -hmm. your books will not transfer over oh, okay. from phone to phone with Bard. They just don't allow that. They're very particular about how they work with books so they just this have to be go ahead herb all right herbie and we'll have you have the last comment <laughs> i do want to mention though with bard one thing you can do is you can access your download history and get your books that way and you don't have to re-add them to the wish list or anything like that you double tap on the book and it'll download so that is the way you can get your book back books back with bard the other way is if you have a computer you can use your computer to download the zip files from Bard and then use iTunes or your Mac, or whatever, to transfer them to your phone. That's the other way you can. But, you know, it won't save your place where you left off in the book or anything like that, unfortunately. But this is Jim. All right. Then, uh, Jim, you're going to have the last say. Oh, OK, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, OK, yeah, actually, you're better off just re-downloading the books you had already downloaded like Herbie said because with Bard now with the way they've got things speeded up on their um, uh, system now because everything on Bard gets put into the cloud and it's done through Amazon believe it or not but um, it's uh, my god it's so fast it's almost instantaneous that I get books um, mm -hmm. All right. Very everybody good. go get everybody go right. get uh, good maps outdoors. It's new. All right. Well, on on that uh, positive note, we have come to the end of our call for this evening. So thank you everyone for your great questions and discussion, and thank you uh, Jim for your help and Herbie as well with the waiting room and mute. And um, don't forget all of our weekly events coming up, the mini buzz on Clubhouse tomorrow, 5 to 6 p.m. Central. On Wednesday, the Mac buzz from uh, 5 to 7 Central. Trekkie Talk Thursday, 8 to 9.30 Central. That's a Trekkie Talk on this Zoom line. Friday, the virtual movie on this Zoom line from um, it, movie starts at 8. 7.30 is pre-movie social time. And the Iva Cafe on Sunday on this Zoom line from four to six central with uh, the widgets app library and improving battery life so we hope you will join us for our events and again our website ibugtoday.org has that information and a lot more so with that thank you everyone we wish you a good night and hope thank you maria you did all the heavy lifting tonight all i had to do was come in and talk <laughs> all right <laughs> all thank right. you everyone.